This lesson is concerned with mesh current analysis. It's also called loop analysis. As was the case for node voltage analysis, mesh current analysis provides a nice systematic way of solving a given circuit. So if we get totally stuck on solving some circuit by inspection and just can't see how to get started, mesh current analysis as well as node voltage analysis is a useful method to have in our analytical toolbox. It's a step-by-step algorithm-based method. Node V and mesh I analysis are often thought as sort of going together, being complementary. Whereas node voltage equations result from applying KCL at nodes, mesh current equations result from applying KVL around closed paths in the circuit. Or I should say, particular types of closed paths referred to as meshes. The title of this lesson is a question, what are mesh currents? And in addressing this question, we will describe how mesh currents are related to the currents flowing through individual circuit elements. I'm going to defer a discussion of how to calculate those mesh currents for a given circuit for the next lesson. But for now, let's define what is meant by a mesh in the context of circuit analysis. A mesh is defined as a special type of closed path or loop in a circuit. It's special in that it does not enclose any other loops within it. So, for example, we see here a closed path labeled A. We could think of that path, for example, as starting at the bottom of element 3, then going through element 3, proceeding through element 4, then through element 6, finally back to the bottom of element 3, completing the loop. This loop qualifies as a mesh. And loop B to the right also qualifies as a mesh. However, the loop X seen here does not qualify as a mesh. It is a closed path starting, say, at the bottom of element 3, then through 3, through 4, through 5, through 2, and back to the bottom of element 3 again. However, it encloses two other loops. All meshes are closed paths, but not all closed paths are meshes. A mesh does not enclose other loops. You could also say a mesh does not enclose any elements. In this case, it entraps or encloses element 6. So, loops A and B qualify as meshes, loop X does not. So, in fact, this circuit, a particular connection of six circuit elements, has three meshes, and they are labeled here as mesh A, mesh B, and mesh C. Having defined meshes, what's a mesh current? For each of these circular arrows, we're going to associate a mesh current with the circular arrow serving as a reference direction arrow for the current. Now, by convention, a clockwise direction has been taken. By the way, I, I should interject that mesh current concepts are limited to planar circuits. That is, circuits that can be drawn on a plane, on a screen, or piece of paper without any crossovers or cross-unders of the lines or wires in the circuit. But back to this circuit. How would those three mesh currents relate to the six element currents? In pondering that, we can note that some of the elements, like element 1, are only in one mesh, whereas other elements, like element 4, are shared between two meshes. Element 1 is only in mesh C, and the direction of the mesh current arrow, I sub C, and the element current reference arrow, I sub 1, coincides. One says that I1 is equal to I C. The element current I1 is equal to the mesh current I C. Now let's have a look at element 2. Element 2 we see is entirely in mesh B, and the element reference arrow is in the same direction as the mesh current reference arrow, so I2 is equal to IB. Element 3 is entirely in mesh A, so can we say I3 equals IA? No, because the element reference arrow is in the opposite direction as the mesh current arrow. So to be correct, we will say that I sub 3 that element current is equal to minus I sub A, where I sub A is the mesh current. Suppose an element is shared between two meshes, as is the case for element 6 shown in this slide. Element 6 in both mesh A and mesh B, so the element current I6 is related to both mesh current I and mesh current IB. In this case, someone has chosen the reference arrow for element current I6 to point from top to bottom. We see that that's in the same direction as the reference arrow for mesh current IA, and in the opposite direction for the reference current for mesh IB. So the proper sign use is to say that I sub 6 is equal to I sub A minus I sub B.
These concepts can be wrapped up in one nice equation. Generalizing, if the, the property of mesh currents is such that if element n is contained in meshes x and y, then the element current is I sub n equals I x minus I y, where x is that mesh for which the mesh current reference arrow is in the same direction as the element current reference arrow, and y is that mesh for which the mesh current reference arrow is in the opposite direction. What if the element's only in one mesh? Well, then I sub n is just equal to I x, or I sub n is equal to minus I y, depending on the direction of the reference arrows. Just to check, let's apply that equation to two currents we've just considered, I1 and I6. Element 1 is only in mesh C. The reference arrow for I1 is the same as the reference arrow for mesh C. So applying the equation I sub n equals I x minus I y just yields I sub 1 is equal to I sub C. There is no I sub y in this case. But for the element 6, which is the meshes A and B, the mesh reference arrow for mesh A is in the same direction as that for element I6 current, whereas the mesh current reference arrow for mesh B is in the opposite. So the equation I sub n equals I x minus I y yields I sub 6 is equal to I sub A minus I sub B. All good. So if one knows the mesh currents for a given circuit, then one can use the equation I sub n equals I sub x minus I sub y to obtain any element current. Then one can use element constraints to get all the element voltages. Knowing the mesh currents enables a complete knowledge of the circuit's properties. Suppose we were told that for this circuit, the mesh currents are as listed in the screen. I sub A equals 250 milliamps, I sub B equals 650 milliamps, and I sub C is equal to 675 milliamps. Let's do the, a numerical exercise of deducing some element currents, voltages, and powers using that mesh current information. Draw the circuit with the mesh current numerical values. And for element 1 at the top of the circuit, using I sub n is equal to I sub x minus I y, yields I sub 1 equals 675 milliamps. For the voltage V sub 1, the element constraint is V sub 1 equals minus 9 volts. Note that we're using passive sign notation here properly to link the reference arrow direction for I1 and the polarity references for V1. The power is I times V, which is minus 6.075 watts. The source delivers 6.075 watts. Next, let's have a look at element 4. Using I sub n equals I x minus I y, yields I4 equals 250 milliamps minus 675 milliamps or minus 425 milliamps. Then using Ohm's law of V equals IR, we can say that V sub 4 is equal to minus 8.5 volts. The power I times V associated with that resistor is 3.6125 watts with the positive sign. That positive sign means that the resistor is absorbing 3.6125 watts from the rest of the circuit. Using similar methods, one obtains all the element current and voltage values as shown in this table. I'll not read them off here, but if you want to do the exercise of creating the table to check your understanding of how to use mesh current values, that'd be fine. And you also might want to write KCL at each node, KVL around each loop to just double check consistency. As a further check, if all the powers are added, P equals IV, and add them all up, you'll find that they do indeed sum to zero as they must. We will end the lesson at this point and leave the discussion of how to calculate numerical values of mesh currents for a given circuit for the next lesson. But let's summarize the content of this lesson succinctly by noting that the relationship between mesh currents and a particular element current is given by I sub n is equal to I x minus I y with the interpretation of those symbols as described in the lesson. And remember that if we have the mesh currents, we can find all the element and voltage and the currents for the entire circuit. Well, thanks for watching this lesson. I hope you can also watch the sequel lesson on how to calculate mesh current values.